to bring in Dr. Nahid Bedelia now. Dr. Bedelia is the medical director of Special Pathogens Unit at Boston Medical Center. She's also an MSNBC medical contributor. So, Dr. Bedelia, uh, let's start with what we just heard there from Allison. What do you make of, of what those parents and, and kids had to say about getting the vaccine? Well, Craig, I, I think the CDC's advisory committee is likely to follow the FDA's recommendation of the amendment of the EUA yesterday. And what I would say is that there's, you know, in my mind, there's four reasons patient uh, parents should consider vaccinating their children. One is the safety data seems quite clear. The signal shows that even the side effects are quite similar to what the adults are facing, and there's no uh, no additional concerns for safety. As you heard Allison say, and you said earlier, 100 percent efficacy. So really protecting um, children, in, you know, the risk of getting COVID um, is much higher to their health than getting this, this vaccine. The other two reasons, you know, is return to normalcy. Getting this vaccine can allow kids to go back, particularly those teenagers who may be going to camps over the summer or returning to school or start doing the social activities. Um, they can return normalcy and they can return the rest of us to normalcy uh, because you're seeing, you know, that we need to reach that community level immunity um, so that people are not transmitting this virus. Even children are not transmitting this virus asymptomatically to those who uh, are still vulnerable. And so for, from all those perspectives, um, I would recommend parents considering vaccinating the children for both their safety as well as our return to, to normalcy. Dr. Bedelia, t- tonight MSNBC is hosting a town hall with President Biden and his COVID response team as well. We're hoping to answer questions about uh, people, you know, the questions that people have, I should say, about the vaccine. As a practicing doctor yourself, what's, what's the biggest concern that you hear from patients and, and what do you tell them? Yeah, Craig, the, the most recent uh, widespread disinformation that I am sort of hearing from patients that they're hearing from others is, you know, why are these vaccines not fully FDA approved? And I kind of want to clarify that because the, the emergency use authorization was given because the public health imperative of trying to get people vaccinated, the number of people who are passing away was so high, but the safety data was already there. The difference, the reason um, Pfizer and Moderna have not been able to submit, and now they're starting to submit, is because you require about six months of safety and efficacy data, which both of them have now said that they have, and that's why Pfizer has moved ahead. The approval is is you know, imminent to happen in the next couple of months. And so um, I, that's the big thing. And I think that approval is actually going to help uh, allay a lot of fears that people uh, currently have. And it's going to help dispel some of the disinformation that exists out there. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, Dr. Bedelia, uh, he now says he is not going to require all public school students to be vaccinated. New York City, of course, the largest school system in this country. What do you make of that decision? This is a hard one, Craig. You know, in states in the past have had the authority to mandate vaccines for school returns, you know, and those are generally uh, fully approved vaccines, right? The, the FDA approval, I think, again, may, may play a role. Uh, it's going to be inter- interesting to see. I think that if the FDA full approval comes through, um, there should be no sort of legal, you know, uh, a counterpoint to, to making this a mandated vaccine. Um, what, what I hope they do is reconsider when that approval comes in, because what we don't want is is the fall season with everybody coming back indoors and the seasonality of this virus to set up a perfect storm to, again, have small clusters of cases. And, and so requiring it or potentially making it as easy as possible for kids to get this vaccine in school is going to make it a safer way for us to return to normalcy in the fall. The governor of, of my home state, uh, South Carolina, the governor there, Henry McMaster, just signed an executive order uh, to allow parents to opt their kids out of wearing a mask in school. Since since only older kids are just now being allowed to get the vaccine, th- is that a move that makes sense to you? No, Craig, I, I think this, the politics around the masking to me has just been symbolic more than anything else. You know, I, I think for the reasons you talked about is that until we're wa- vaccinated, even even when we're vaccinated, when majority of those around us are not vaccinated, indoors still raise a lot of concern for me in terms of transmission and and, and these types of mandates and, and these types of sort of political, um, you know, display are more, as I said, political than, than looking at the safety of the students or the communities. Um, it is what it is. I think that's what's led to some of the damage that we've seen in terms of bringing our country together to responding during this pandemic. All right. Dr. Nahid Bedelia, we'll have to leave it there. Dr. Bedelia, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.